Hi, everyone. Welcome back. This is episode nine of Pod TC. We have been doing this for a whole nine months already. Um, hard to believe, but this month, I should say, uh, we are going to deep dive into a specific issue that I didn't know that we were going to get ourselves into here in the first year of Pod TC, but I'm really happy to welcome a friend. Uh, to the podcast, someone who works um, on our OTC exec board now and for Eastern Gateway Community College. Uh, Brittany Crozio is here with me. How are you doing, Brittany? I'm good. How are you? Doing well. Thanks for asking. Thanks for coming today. I appreciate it. Um, Brittany is the executive director of TRIO at EGCC. Very important job for sure. Um, I am really looking forward to our conversation about TRIO and transfer and kind of how they intertwine and how maybe we could maybe even do them better here in the near future. But um, the big thing for those, I'm sure some people know who you are from the conference and everything this year yeah. and stuff, uh, but could you tell the audience just a little bit about yourself? Maybe, you know, they know where you work, but like, where'd you go to school and anything else you want to share? Early. So my name is Brittany, obviously. Um, I was a textbook traditional college student, graduated from high school, and went on to my undergraduate at Ohio University. Go Bobcats, not Ohio State. I know some people like to confuse them. Um, <laughs> but this is Ohio, so I think everybody knows OU yeah. versus OSU. Um, and I loved it there. Um, I think I got my... The, the typical intro into student affairs, worked in res life forever, <laughs> yep. loved it, um, found out that you could make a career out of working in student affairs. Um, and yeah, I, I really, I really enjoyed being a, being an RA. It was, it was a lot of fun to me. And I, I always found myself, I mean, I've always been very motherly, so I, I took to that role pretty well, and I always really enjoyed, like, helping students make their schedules more than just, like, conflict me mediation and um, busting people's parties, you know, as <laughs> people think that that's all that RAs do. Sure. I enjoyed, like, all of the different aspects of it, so... When I started talking to my RD, you know, she let me know that student affairs is a thing that you can get into. So I started looking at different uh, master's degree programs, knowing that I was going to, um, I, I, I studied many different things in college, but I ended up graduating with a degree in French. I thought I was going to be a French teacher, mm -hmm. um, but then I, um, started student teaching and absolutely hated it so I picked whatever degree I was closest with because at this time I I realized that I was going to go into student affairs and knew I needed a master's degree regardless so I was like let's just finish this one up and mm -hmm. we'll start the next one so I, I finished my degree in French I had been talking to my resident director um and I applied to the University of Tennessee their master's degree program. Mm -hmm. It's a really, really good one. Got denied. That was really fun. That was like, that was, um, that was, that was a tough time. I mean, honestly, like you're fresh out of college and you think like, I, I, I hadn't graduated yet, but I thought that was my path that I was going to sure. go on and I was going to get, I was going to be an RD as a G, you know, as a grad assistant and all of that. So things kind of changed and I ended up, um, applying for the Disney college program of all things. Cause I knew that I wanted to get out of Ohio. That's about all I knew. So I did that, um, got in and, um, after I graduated from college, I moved to Orlando and actually that's where I still am today. Not still am. I moved back here. I moved. It's been, it's been a tumultuous experience. I moved back to Ohio after doing my college program. I lived down here for a little bit. And then I moved back to Ohio and that's where, well, I, I had a baby and I got a part-time job working at Eastern Gateway in the TRIO Student Support Services program. Previously, I had a little bit of student, student affairs experience. After my Disney college program, I worked in um, Orlando at Valencia College, which I'm sure everyone listening has at least heard of Valencia. It's a really fantastic community college. They have 
I mean, they're just so, it was so fun to work for them. It was a really great experience. I worked for the Office for Students with Disabilities and I was an academic advisor. Mm -hmm. And that was my first, I, I kind of am skipping around, I guess, but I'm going to, I'm going to talk about Valencia for a second. Um, that was my first experience working with people that were different than me. So that was my first experience with students with disabilities or um, non-traditional college students. Yeah. I had never worked in a community college before, never attended a community college. And I really liked it. I liked that students were there because they chose to be there because it seems sometimes from the community college point of view that students go on to a four-year college kind of like me because that's what you're supposed to do and it's a lot of you know 18 year olds that just go on where at a community college is like they're asking to be there they're trying to be there so I really enjoyed that and then like I said we me and my husband um well we were boyfriend and girlfriend at the time but um we eventually got married we're still married <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, we moved back to Ohio to be around my family and uh then I got the job at Eastern Gateway with the Trio Student Support Services program I knew nothing about Trio nothing at all until I started interviewing and I loved number one that I was getting back into the community college because I thought I think this is where I'm going to thrive and number two, the TRIO Student Support Services program can only serve low-income students, first-gen students, or students with a documented disability. And I fell under two of those three categories. In college, I was a low-income student and I was first-gen. So it was nice mm -hmm. to kind of get back to that again and not realize that there was such a community of support for those students. I had no idea that yeah. those resources were even a thing. So it was, um, it was kind of, you know, serendipitous. I needed part-time because my family became a huge priority for me. And yeah, <laughs> I just <laughs> kind of went long-winded. I ended up doing my master's degree online. I started down here at UCF. Um, but then when we decided to move back to Ohio, I loved UCF, by the way. But um, when we moved back to Ohio, I was like, ah, I want to take a little bit of a break. And then I ended up doing my master's degree online at Arkansas State University and got my master's degree in college student personnel services. And I think that was really helpful, too, because um, through that online program, it kind of prepared me for what was to come with COVID. I graduated with my master's in August of 2020. So um, I was kind of going through things that the students were going through at the time. I had been online, so I kind of knew how to help my students navigate through those muddy waters of online education. So I'm glad that I did my, my master's degree online. And I also got to pick a couple of my electives were community college focused. So I really liked that too. Yeah. And yeah, I, I think that's my life story. <laughs> You did it pretty. I have, kids. I have, I have two kids. I have a five-year-old and a two-year-old, and I'm sure everyone can hear this hoarse voice and cough that I have, and it's because my son went back to school. So all the parents out there understand that. <laughs> yep. Well, that's. Thank you for explaining all that. I mean, you. I think you dived into the second question a little bit as well, but it's great for context. It's great for everyone to get to know you, and I mean, you're our. Um, one person on the board that actually lives outside of Ohio, still an Ohio institution, still working with our students just from a distance, um, yes. enjoying the sunny but hurricane -y weather right now, you know? Yeah. yeah. So a yeah. bit of a double edge, but I'm sure you'll be laughing at us soon, given that <laughs> it got a little colder the last couple of nights here in Ohio, but. Right. I'm a little jealous of it, to be honest. I, it's my favorite time of year. So, <laughs> I mean, the dreaded, like, two months from now is what I'm trying to mm -hmm. keep it, keep a distance in my mind. But right now mm -hmm. I, I do love the fall. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. How is your uh, pumpkin spice latte in 110 degree weather? How did that it. feel? I'm, okay. I'm a hot coffee drinker at all times. So my husband makes fun of me, like even if it's 110 degrees out, I'm drinking hot coffee. So when <laughs> it was pumpkin spice latte day, I did in fact go get a hot pumpkin spice latte and enjoyed every single yeah. sip. You're a maniac, but that is funny. <laughs> I know it. I know it. 
blame my parents. They're they're yeah. the hot coffee drinker. <laughs> Well, um, to keep the ball rolling on some stuff. So that kind of explains like you got working in the community colleges, you, you know, got into working with TRIO and those those students um, just as like a frame of reference, because mm -hmm. um, some of us have TRIO programs at our institutions. Yeah. Maybe some people don't actually work terribly closely with their TRIO programs. Could you just give us like a quick synopsis on like, what is the TRIO program? Like what's kind of the yeah. threshold for students to use those services? Absolutely. So the TRIO programs were designed in the, um, they were put into legislation, I guess, in the Higher Education Act of 1965. And um, that authorized TRIO. People think there's only three programs, but it did come from the original three programs, which were Upward Bound, uh, SSS, and Talent Search, maybe? Oh, I don't know the first three. Now there is a whole umbrella. So we yeah. are federally funded grant programs that were designed to serve underrepresented student populations. So I know there were like a lot of buzzwords in there. To break it down, um, the TRIO programs serve low-income, first-gen, usually some some of the programs. It's, it's focused on low-income and first-gen students and um, really reaching out to those populations and making sure that they know that they have the opportunity to access education. The Talent Search programs serve middle school students. Upward Bound serves high school students. SSS serves college students. McNair serves graduate students. Um, EOC serves any and all students. It's focused on 19 and up, either um, getting a GED or accessing post-secondary education. And I know there's like um, offshoots of all those programs. So Upward Bound, there's Upward Bound Math and Science. So they take students who are first-gen low-income and want to go into a STEM field. There's an SSS. Um, there's an SSS, uh, I think STEM, there's an SSS strictly for students with disabilities. Um, there's veterans upward bound. I know that I'm forgetting a program and I'm going to kick myself, but that's okay. Um, I think I, I really can't remember. That's okay. So at Eastern Gateway, we have three trio programs and I, um, oversee all in some way. So we have an Upward Bound program, an SSS program, and an EOC program, Educational Opportunity Centers. And yeah, we serve all of our students who are low income first gen. And um, we provide, all of the programs provide different services and have different objectives. For the sake of this conversation, I'll kind of speak to student support services, which is mm -hmm. the grant that really is, um, prevalent on college campuses. And that grant has really specific objectives to, um, you know, ensure students are on the right path. One of those objectives is that whatever percentage the grant was written for of students must graduate and transfer to a four-year institution. So there was a couple years that that year, that number for us was not great. And I really think it was during the pandemic that I was started getting emails from OTC about um, like free webinars. And um, I think even over the pandemic, there was like a free, I think that's when you could join OTC for free. Like there was yeah. a period. And I think that's what got me started. And I really enjoyed um, the community and the fact that all of the different institutions in Ohio were kind of represented in some way or you were able to network with so many different people. Like I never thought I'd have a great relationship with somebody at Kent just because we don't really have a ton of students. With Eastern Gateway being situated, we have a campus in Youngstown and then we have a campus in Steubenville and also obviously our online population. Most of our students were just going up the hill to YSU. Literally, it's one hill. Um, but it's been really awesome to have relationships with people all across the state. So I kind of um, recognized that transfer students in some sort of way, students that wanted to transfer, I should say, um, didn't know where to start. Like they had no idea yeah. even just where to begin. 
especially students in our population, that it was our job to let them know that it's possible. It's possible for you to go on and transfer and it's possible for you to get a bachelor's degree. So that's when I um, started working closer with OTC and developing those relationships and making sure our students understood all of that. Um, the TRIO programs, I think they're a really great opportunity for, even if you if you have a student that, um, it, it, let me just go back. The SSS program that I work for, we kind of, we rebranded over the pandemic and we call ourselves TRIO Scholars mm -hmm. because these students are outstanding students because that the SSS program, we want to help all students, but you really do have to want to succeed just as bad as we want you to succeed because that's how it works you know yeah. if we're engaging in intrusive advising with you and we're engaging you to um be a part of the community and participate in events and come to our workshops and all of this like you have to want that as bad as we do there has to be like a mutual respect so um we rebranded to trio scholars so going back to what you said about you some people may have never worked with a TRIO program. Sometimes the TRIO programs don't say TRIO at certain schools. So like for OU, for example, I looked back, I had no idea that OU had a TRIO program while I was there because it wasn't called that. So if there's anyone that's you know interested in that, I'm sure administration knows that there are TRIO programs. So you can always reach out. Sweet. So yeah. I think you, you touched on it for a moment there, and I kind of want to expound on it since we are a transfer organization mm -hmm. and we'll kind of talk about how the, the two get intertwined. So um, obviously for students, it's part of, I don't know if you call it like a mandate or an expectation or whatever, um, for a certain number of your students to be able to go on from the community college to the four years. So mm -hmm. you, a lot of times, um, or people in the trio sphere, work with students kind of on a really holistic approach that you might be covering, you know, multiple needs of a student. And in reality, maybe that transfer out service would be just another need within the umbrella of what you serve. So is there, I guess, um, do you see that the, the mission of TRIO and transfer out services are run parallel? Are they intertwined more than we would like to maybe think sometimes? Why or why not? Absolutely. I think that the the approach that the TRIO SSS program specifically takes to advising students, like you mentioned, we do a holistic approach. So we work with students to answer their financial aid questions at our school, they are their, uh, our advisors are their academic advisors. They don't need to go see a different advisor. So they're getting registered for classes. Their, um, their advisors act as mentors. We check in with them. They have to meet with us three times a semester. So we get to know the students very quickly. We get to know the different barriers that they might have. So I kind of recognize that we were we were lacking transfer services specifically in TRIO. And um, we wanted to make sure that all of our students' needs were being met. So we actually designed a program that we call the Transfer Opportunity Program. It's our top program, and it's specifically for TRIO SSS students. And we start with them from the first time they mention they want to transfer. We sit down, and then the first thing we do is a career interest type test with them and make sure that it aligns with what their goals are. And if it doesn't, we kind of talk through that. And of course, we just go based on whatever the student says. And then they have a little checklist that they check in. They can work on it as they wish, but they, um, it, it, it's, it's a, we start, like I said, with the career, then they move on to let's talk about what your barriers might be. Are you location bound? Are you um, how close are you to using all your Pell? Different things that are pretty specific to each student that I don't know that just a general transfer office would, number one, have access to, or to be honest, have time for, you know, because we, 
our, our TRIO SSS program is only funded to serve 165 students, whereas a, a, a transfer advisor could have hundreds. And then we have two advisors per, so they're really only seeing about 80 students each. Yeah. Um, so I think that the opportunity that the TRIO program has to provide those services and make sure that each student's needs are being met. Do you have any barriers? Um, and then from there, we, we talk about the barriers. Are you location bound? Okay, so then what is your, what is your radius that you can go to? What, how far do you wanna travel? Um, do you want to stay on campus? We we make sure they understand every different aspect of what that would look like. Sometimes we get students that are like, um, they 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 just have no idea about really anything because they're first gen or whatever the the issue is um, or concern or whatever they have, and they say we we get some sometimes that we have to talk to that they're like, yeah, I want to go to the UCLA School of Veterinary Medicine. And we have to talk about like, you don't have a driver's license yet. You know, like things like that yeah. to where like, let's talk. And we have that ability. Actually, both of our advisors have like a little bit of a counseling background. So while they mm -hmm. don't counsel, um, they have those skills to be able to talk to students in a way of like, let's think realistically and shoot for the stars nobody's gonna stop you but i also want you to have some realistic options as well sure so um i do think that uh our advisors specifically are in a pretty um it's a, it's, an, it's a good position for them to be in in terms of transfer so once i kind of started to talk about the transfer opportunity program that we have once they get going on that you know we help them with the, um, I think it's NACAC, the transfer waiver. We mm -hmm. make sure that they know all of those different things, um, help them do their FAFSAs, help them fill out scholarships. And then we help them all the way to getting their transcripts sent over. So we just want to guide them along the way yeah. the whole time. And so they have someone to lean on because it's not easy as a first-gen college student even to like take that step to say, this yeah. is something that I want to do. Yeah. That's really nice that uh, program you were talking about and roping that in, you know, with your advisors at EGCC. I mean, that's, I'm sure, invaluable to those. I mean, I don't know if we technically consider them at-risk students or just, I mean, we're we're expecting students to learn, you know, as the first in their family, just how college works and they are learning about EGCC. Um, but then we're also expecting them to know exactly how to jump ship to another college, whether right. that's another two year, four year, whatever. Um, I mean, that's, it's a lot, especially if there's no family members around to kind of make that. So I think that um, just the fact that you're already helping them in so many different ways, I'm sure that they have pretty good rapport with their trio yeah. advisor already, but you're, you're right. You know, like serving a specific smaller group of students is very manageable. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's hectic at times. So I don't, I don't want to sound disingenuous, no, but no, no, no. Um, just the fact that like, if you're working with 80 to hundred, 120 students, it's a bit more feasible than um, I know some of our transfer centers and stuff at, you know, different colleges, like they might be working with hundreds of students and maybe right. it's a little less holistic, but they could probably lean on their trio services in those cases for at least the students that qualify for a program, right. you know, whether it be whichever trio program that right. they are qualifying for. So that's and, really nice and, to hear. Yeah. And that those 80 students, you know, we're a two-year college. So we usually have them for at least a year and a half. Yeah. So you build up that rapport too. So when it gets to the point that they're wanting to transfer, they really do take your opinion into account of, you know, sure. we've guided you this far. We're trying to help you with what's best for you. And um, we recently had a student who who has been using the transfer opportunity program checklist. And they said, you know, I, I could pull it up. They literally said it today. Something along the lines of, I didn't realize how accessible all of this really was because we just, we really do get the opportunity to hold their hand the whole way. Yeah. Well, it's also nice too. Um, just this is my personal experience with your 
TRIO program, obviously, is that when um, a student's interested, generally, I can start to speak with them really early as well. So it's been one person for them at EGCC. And I might not be their person when they actually get here to the four-year college, but the onboarding process, they kind of still have one person to go to until maybe we can get them more or less into a TRIO program here or a different support center um, right. to make sure that they're also successful at the four-year institution. So I think that coming from, if I worked at a community college, leading on TRIO services to help provide the service while they're there, but even as a four-year specialist counselor, you know, whatever your school calls you, it also makes sense for us to lean on, you know, potentially the TRIO advisors at our local community colleges to help make that handoff a bit easier for the student as well. Yeah, they're used to that one-on-one. -on -one. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there's there's studies and there's data that proves that, you know, holistic, being able to provide holistic services in college is going to make a student more engaged. There's, there's plenty of research out there to show that. And when they have a one-stop shop, so when they know that they can come, there's a lot of information out there, right? And they know that they can come to us and we will either help them navigate those waters um, or we already know the answer to the question that they're asking rather than, you know, having to say, well, you'll have to contact financial aid or you'll have to go register with another advisor. The fact that we can do it all under one roof and then provide a, tra you know, a transition like, and now yeah. I need you to go talk to Jonathan because this is what I've advised you on. And mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that he is on the same page because, you know, these are low income students. We want every single dollar that they have coming from Pell to be used the right way. So sure. we, 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 that's one of the first questions we ask a student that comes into our program is, do you plan on transferring to a four-year institution? Because if so, that's when we really hop on the, well, let's get your advising pretty specific. And I think Ohio does a pretty good job of making sure those core 60 classes, 60 credit hours transfer um, yeah. and just making sure students really understand that because I'm, I'm, I'm the type that I'm not going to say no to if you want to take digital photography, I get it. You know, that sounds like a cool class too. But also understand that, you know, you might have to make up that humanities. It might not exactly. So just, you know, sure. It, when you have those relationships with students, those conversations are really easy. Yeah, you can be a bit more candid with a yeah. student that you've met with multiple times for sure right. and built up that trust. Yeah. yeah. And it's kind of sad for me because now, I mean, I love what I do. I love having my hand in a little bit of everything, but I have very little contact, like direct contact with students. Usually yeah. what I do now is if there's a conflict, I usually, this is where I step in, but I don't really get any of those really positive interactions. So I thrive when my advisors have like an advising question because at, at my core, I'm an academic advisor. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I, I also think that that's why I enjoy being an OTC so much because it keeps me connected. It keeps me, mm -hmm. um, engaged with really what what you know at at the conference listening to you know the Ohio higher ed listening to what the problems are or what they're trying to tackle because that's you know the issues right now it kind of keeps me yeah looking looking forward to yeah. you know the days ahead because sometimes the administrative tasks do get they get little, us all they weigh you down yeah so, they do and we like having you around on OTC. So um, it's a two-way street. Thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, and I, I, th I think, I, think mm -hmm. I have a little bit of a different, obviously, experience because I work remote. And like most people probably listening, a good majority of EGCC students are actually in Youngstown or Steubenville. Yeah. They're, they're all across the country. So I have a, a, a different position as to, you know, I, I also am a huge advocate for accessible services to online students as well, because I was one. Now I work remotely and I work with online students. So yeah. making sure that transfer is understood and accept and accessible for those students, which those waters start to get a little muddy when, you know, you're trying to advise someone that wants to go to 
Texas Tech or something, you know, and it's like, yeah, I'm going to advise you as well as I can, but I'm not guaranteeing anything. So, but um, yeah, so it, it, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty unique position and I, I enjoy it. Yeah, I think you do. It sounds like you do. <laughs> I think I, you do. <laughs> yeah, I think you do. I do, um, I do. I think I have like one more, maybe larger question um, for you. And this is more or less, and this is probably a bit out of your space, but I'd love your your perspective on it. Um, if you, or if someone you're talking to um, does not have maybe TRIO services offered at their institution, or maybe they're buried in another name or something that it makes them harder to find, or maybe they're just not these big robust transfer, or I mean TRIO services that help out with transfer and stuff. Um, do you know of any other like offices or services that may be able to help? I think academic advisors do a really great job at most institutions at what they do. And there is a piece of academic advisors that kind of touch on everything, I think, because I think really great academic advisors do take into account students that want to transfer and making sure that those things align and having those mm -hmm. hard conversations about like, um, well, I mean, I guess I don't know how much access to information certain academic advisors have, but, you know, if you can see that a student is at a two-year college and they're at 120 credits, you know, you can say, hey, you're probably getting pretty close to maxing out your Pell, so let's yeah. focus on something. Um, specific departments, though, I know at Eastern Gateway, we have success coaches. So we um, sent, we refer a lot of students that don't qualify for TRIO scholars to our success coaches. Those success coaches were actually um, written based off of the TRIO SSS intrusive advising model. Okay. So um, maybe something like that. Any sort of, I also encourage students or um, staff, I guess, to maybe look into their disability services or accessibility services office. Like yeah. I said, when I worked at Valencia, they had specific academic advisors for students with disabilities only because it made their lives easier, just like a TRIO program. So we knew what was going on with them. So we could help them advise in a way of, you know, not filling up their schedule all on one day if they couldn't have it like that. Or, yeah. you know, just, just taking into account all that a student has and that can start with a question of like so tell me about yourself you know yep. sometimes sometimes things get to be a little too transactional I think and I think that's what I pride the trio programs on being able to do is we have the time to not be transactional we can take time to talk to you and listen to you and hear what you're going through or hear what successes you have going on rather than focusing on the transaction of needing to advise you or needing to let you know that you need to get your transcripts sent in or sure. we do that. We do that, but yeah. um, we kind of have a backstory to attach to it. Yeah. I always like that approach anyway. I think when you get into the field for a certain amount of time, you can almost, I mean, like for better, or for worse, you can sometimes guess kind of what the need of a student is going to be. And you, in your mind, what is that called? Competitive listening. Like you're listening to someone, but you're you've already got your response ready to go yeah. instead of active listening, where you're sitting down and hearing the whole story before you actually because maybe they do need help with X, but then be it by listening and giving them a few minutes to talk right off the bat, just telling them about yourself or themselves, you learn about Y or Z. Mm -hmm. um, and I've always I think that over time I've learned more or less to do that because instead of like I don't flat out just say like what do you need, but like I'll ask it or I'll reframe it and just say like, what about this process is making you feel anxious? What is, you know, making you, you know, second guess this? What is, you know, making you, you know, just more or less asking the question about like, this is you. So taking that more holistic approach and even maybe taking more or less like your modeling approach just into transfer services mm -hmm. in general, you know, maybe it's not the office that can, see deep into a student's like financial aid information or something right. like that. Not everyone has access to that, but more right. or less just like the personal touch as much as you can get. I mean, I think that that's a big thing we can always take away. Absolutely. I totally agree. And I think there's a, a, a rise in 
non-traditional students becoming that traditional student. So yeah, really at the surface, we don't know anything that's going on in somebody just by looking at them. You know, we, you might not understand why a student is very against, you know, hey, you know that you could get into Ohio State and they would pay you, you know, like we have students like that that we're like, you can go there. And then you find out like, oh, well, they have a two-year-old and, you know, they're, yeah. they're supported by their family or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, sure. but you only get that when you start talking to them and finding yep. out, you know, where their priorities are. And that's, that's why we designed the top program to start addressing the barriers from the beginning to, to, to really help students see like, we can get really ex excited about UCLA School of Medicine or Veterinary School of Medicine. You can get really excited about that. And I hope you do, because I want you to know that you, it, you're, it's, you're possible, you're capable of doing it. Just know that these are the different things that we're going to have to tackle along the way. And it's going to be a hard journey. Yeah. So I think that, that, that personal touch, and I definitely agree. There's, I mean, I'm, I'm totally, you know, I, I do it all the time where I, I feel like I already know what's coming. Like when an advisor comes to me, because that's, like I said, that's what I get more often than not. I, an advisor comes to me with a student issue and I'm like, well, it's probably X, Y, Z. And they're like, yeah. oh, well, cause you weren't listening. I'm like, sorry. Okay. Tell me, <laughs> you know, yeah because you, you start to be in it. I've been at Eastern gateway now for, it was five years in June. Um, nice. and so that's, that's a, that's a pretty, that's a pretty good time considering, you know, I don't have a lot of, I mean, that's really, this is really the only experience I've ever had other than I worked it for a year at Valencia. So yeah. this has been like my, my foundation. And I think that I'll carry that through with me on my, wherever my student affairs journey takes me is reminding me that it's always, the first question should always be, how are you? And tell me about yourself and make it sound genuine and be That's genuine good. because they well, can sniff it out. You they know, can, they can, they can definitely out. sniff it out. Yeah. And I think that you'll get so much more back from a student when they feel like you care. Amen. That's kind of what we're focused on. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think we I think we covered everything in probably more depth. Your expertise is obviously it's it's wide and it's appreciated. And I'm happy you came on the podcast today. So thank you very much. Thank I'm you. just yeah. Of course. And if there's anyone listening that is in a trio program or is an academic advisor of a trio program or anybody, if this somehow reaches somebody in the state of Ohio that is in a trio program. I highly, highly, highly recommend, and I'm gonna, I'm not only saying this because I'm on the, on the membership committee, but I highly recommend looking <laughs> into memberships for um, OTC. They've heard from me for a year now, and I'm really going to start, you know, focusing on getting some trio members in here because I do think, and clearly you asked me to be on here, I think that we have a lot of, we have a different perspective of transfer that I think is is super valuable. So I yeah. encourage any, anyone um, and people outside of transfer as well, financial aid, academic advising, um, accessibility services to look into being a part of OTC because it really all is, it really does all work hand in hand. If, if we're able to help one student, you know, go on and be successful, in my opinion, that's a win. Yeah. Awesome. Well, you plugged the membership, so I will refrain from doing so. <laughs> Just <laughs> kidding. Did. Well, uh, thank you so much, Brittany. Um, this has been a great conversation, and we'll we'll make sure that that information gets out, and we'll send out the the link to the membership and stuff. You know, just yeah. in the in the show notes. But okay. um, thanks, Brittany, and thank you everyone for listening. Um, this is, like I said, in the at the top, uh, our ninth episode of Pod TC. Um, for next month, it'll be October. So hint, hint, wink, wink. It's going to be National Transfer Student Week. So hopefully we'll have something for you special for that. But um, stay tuned. Uh, we'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>